Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office and thank you for joining me. This is morning prayer for Saturday, August the 9th. It's the eighth week after Pentecost and week five in the Psalm cycle and the scripture for this service, Psalm 90 and John chapter 2 verse 13 to 25. And please join with me in singing the first verse of Psalm 95 to the tune of St. Columba. Come, let us sing unto our God, the rock of our salvation. Praise and thanks we bring before our songs of joy we sing you. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, O oh God, you have been our dwelling in all generations. Alleluia, Psalm 90. And please recite it together with me. Alleluia, O oh God, you have been our dwelling in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, and before you formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us to destruction and say, Return, O children of the earth, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. And you carry them away like a flood, in a dream. In the morning they are grass which grows up. In the morning it flourishes and grows and in the evening it cut down and withers. For we are consumed by your anger, and by your wrath we are troubled. We, you have set our iniquities before yourself, our secret sins in the light of your face. For we pass all our days away in your wrath, our life is over like a sigh. The days of our years are seventy, and if by reason of strength they be eighty years, Yet they are nothing but labor and sorrow, for they are soon over, and we pass away. Who knows the power of your anger? We fear the strength of your wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O God, how long? Have mercy on your servants. Satisfy us quickly with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad, as you have afflict for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants, and your glory to their children. And let the favor of the Most High, our God, be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, grant success to the work of our hands. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, O God, you have been our dwelling in all generations. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 2, beginning at verse 13. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle, and he also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. And his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? And Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. 
After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. And when he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about anyone. For he himself knew what he was, what was in everyone. Here ends the lesson. And now let us pray for the church and the world. And please uh, say, hear us, tender God, after each response, or each petition. For the mission of the church, that it may extend the peace and the love of Christ to all people, we pray. Hear us, tender God. For Tom and Alan and Ray and Richard and Don, and for all of our church leaders, and for all clergy and ministers, that they may be ever faithful servants of your word and sacraments, we pray. Hear us, tender God. For unity in the church, that our scandalous divisions may be healed, we pray. Hear us, tender God. For the poor and the hungry and the thirsty, for the destitute and the unemployed, that we may share with them the riches of creation and free the world of poverty and famine, we pray. Hear us, tender God. For Barack and Joe and John, and for all the leaders of this nation, city, and state, and for the leaders of the nations of the world, that they may bring justice and peace in all the earth, we pray. Hear us, tender God. That God, who's begun this ministry, may bring it to fulfillment, we pray. Hear us, tender God. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Francis and Claire and all your saints, let us commend one another and all of our lives to Christ our God. We pray, hear us, O tender God. For the intentions of those who've asked our prayers, and for all of your intentions. We pray, hear us, tender God. Let us sing together. Our beloved, which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Let us pray. Everlasting God, shine your favor and mercy upon us. Grant us success in the works of our hands. May wisdom ever grow in our hearts to the glory of your name. Amen. We trust in the mercy of God forever. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. 